Hi, Nicholas. <clears throat> thank you very much. Also, thank you for having me today. Um, I'll, first, I will try to share my screen. So, share, okay. So, now you should see my screen, right? Okay. Uh, then let's start the presentation. So, uh, my name is Maximilian Herz. I'm working um, at Fraunhofer IGD as a developer and project manager. Um, I'm actually here as a replacement for Johannes Bär. So, I, uh, I myself did not uh, participate in uh, the development of uh, x 3 so, um, but I try to do my best uh, to uh, to explain to you what Xvidom is and answer the questions. Um, so, uh, well, where do I start? So, Xvidom uh, overview. So, Xvidom basics. Uh, we will talk about um, or this is the overview of the presentation. So, we will talk about Xvidom basics. I will just explain the basic stuff, what it is, what it does. Then we will look. Uh, have a short look at PBR functionality and GLTF uh, and uh, the external model extension, which is, um, uh, yeah, we, we will see that. Okay, um, so I'm, uh, as, the, as our institute is closely connected to the university, uh, we uh, have to um, make lectures for the students, so uh, for 3D uh, graphics. And I actually use uh, Xvidom as a tool to show the students um, uh, how to how to work with uh, scene graphs and uh, 3D graphics in general. So uh, that's uh, basically why I'm involved in Xvidom. Um, so uh, what is Xvidom? It's a JavaScript library, library that um, can be included like every other uh, JavaScript library, into your HTML document. Uh, you then can um, have the post, uh, have, uh, you can then uh, put um, put tags into your HTML to uh, to show X, uh, X3 data. I, I will just uh, just open the browser and show it. I think that's the uh, uh, easiest way. So, um, or let's uh, put it there. So. Everything probably you will need to uh, to find uh, about Xvidom you can find off, uh, on our homepage xvidom.org. And um, the first thing we see is uh, actually these things that look like images at the first glance. But if I click on them and I wrote them, I see okay, this is a 3D model that's embedded in the homepage. Um, uh, it's an X3D model, and uh, this is basically what X3DOM does. How does it do that? So after you included the JSON library, you are now able uh, to have a tag that's called X3D, where, where you can define a scene and uh, then write X3D um, syntax uh, code to uh, create your X3D scene or scene graph. Um, we actually tried, uh, this is, uh, Xvidom actually does not understand the real X3D, so, but we try to get as close as possible to the X3D standard. Some things were not possible. Uh, for example, I think that we cannot have self-closing tags, but uh, yeah, uh, most of the stuff that you need should be supported. So uh, we have this small example which just defines um, a shape. Uh, the, uh, then an appearance with a material, and then we just uh, give it the actual 3D data to say it's a box. This is really fine. So what we now have is just a red box, color red. So um, to show you a little uh, more uh, how that works, I downloaded this example, and I will uh, just open it. So like this, so this is our example. And then I will show you the source code. So this is our code. Um, what we actually do here is include uh, the JS library directly from the internet. And then um, 
we have the uh, ability to put an X3D tag in here. What uh, Xvidom actually does is um, once you, uh, the page is loaded, it searches for X3D tags and then it takes all that is in here and interprets it and uh, translates, it into, uh, translates it into OpenGL calls. So, um, yeah, if we want to uh, just a uh, small example, uh, change the color. Uh, we can do that like this. So when I reload the page, now it's green. Um, I can uh, add, add another shape just uh, to. So you can you can basically build your own X3D scene in in here with the X3D uh, syntax, and. Um, uh, just, uh, I'll just put in here like um, maybe sphere. Okay. So Oh yeah, okay, uh, these are all <laughs> on the same position now. Uh, I could add a um, translate node now to translate them, but um, yeah, I will show that later. I will just put the screen here. Um, so yes, um, usually I would talk here about, uh, for the students I would talk about um, uh, scene graphs and uh, also um, different node types. You can, uh, I think this is not the scope here. So you can, uh, if you go to Xredom uh, homepage, you can see the documentation. Developer API, probably um, most interesting, you can have all the classes and tags here. And for example, if I want to, uh, to add a transform node, I just look how it how it would look. So it's called transform. So let's put it here. Um, uh, we have to put it inside the shape. So these actually don't interest us. Um, we are interested in the translation at this time only. So for the one here, and then uh, Uh, sorry, I don't know why it's uh, not right now, but uh, I, I think this is also beyond the scope. So I will just um, tell you that you can see in the documentation, you can uh, actually learn all about the uh, uh, notes. I want to move a little quicker here, so I don't exceed the time limit. So um, yeah, but actually this is, uh, I think just having, uh, this is a small example, just uh, um, just uh, uh, the cube, but uh, I think it's it's really um, really impressive that you can just have uh, a few lines of uh, of uh, XML code and create a whole scene. Also with your camera set up and everything. If you actually um, try to do this in C plus plus or something, uh, as you probably know, this would be a big, uh, much more code and um, way more, more complicated OpenGL calls and all stuff like that. So this is, I think it's really impressive that you can just put in some uh, some tags and then you get uh, your um, 3D scene and also inside the browser. That's also why uh, we use that to, um, to teach uh, our students um, about 3D graphics and scene graphs in general. So 
yeah, let's continue here. Um, uh, it's, uh, yeah, Exudem is open source and it's free for non-commercial and commercial purposes. So, yeah, uh, that was the demo actually. Now we go into uh, physically based rendering. So uh, physically based rendering, probably most of you know what it is. It's a modern description of materials uh, and a new lighting model, uh, which can make really um, realistic looking graphics. Uh, most uh, most uh, engines use it uh, and, and also in computer games you see it. And uh, our department proposed a material description on Web3D in 2016. This is uh, implemented now in GLTF, for example. So what we can do now is uh, we have basically more than, uh, we have multiple textures that define our, um, our, our metallic uh, state, for example. As you can see like this, um, here is a, a picture of roughness level, global in illumination. So this is supported now um, by Xredom also. So you just need to have uh, um, a 3D model that, uh, that has uh, the, all the information, all the materials, and then you can load it uh, with a physical material node. Um, yeah, uh, so I will just show that also uh, here in our examples page, you can have that, um, you can look at uh, different um, physically based rendering models. So, and yeah, you, these models are just loaded uh, via inline commands. Um, so you just, you don't have to actually put all the text in manually, you just say, load this file or load this X3D, load this GLTF, and it will be loaded. Um, I also wanted to show you, uh, oh yeah, this is our, uh, our GitHub page. Um, uh, so uh, if you want to, uh, I will talk about it later a little, but if you want to uh, have, if you have more in-depth questions or uh, you can uh, look at um, our GitHub page, GitHub X Freedom. I, all the links are in the uh, presentation as well. So um, let me go back to the X Freedom page. So um, if you look here, you can um, click here and then you have the example a portal where you can look at many examples for what you can uh, do with X Freedom. Uh, for example, um, this is a, a big scene, how you see it loads and it renders in the browser beautifully. Um, another cool thing uh, is, uh, another cool example I think is this one, more, a little more sophisticated, uh, small 3D editor in the, that runs in the browser, uh, can uh, create your X3D scenes and also export them. Uh, this is just used uh, as an example here. Yeah. So um, there's actually two, two pages with examples. So this was the example page. And the other thing is uh, you go to documentation and then to tutorials. You can, um, we, we also have some tutorials for cool stuff. As you see, you can, for example, do animations, uh, lights, shadow effects, all the good stuff that, uh, that we have. So um, uh, I wanted to show you uh, how you can load just a model with one line or five lines. Or what. So we declare the X3D um, tag so that the, uh, it knows where to start. Then we declare a scene and then we just load via inline an X3D file. And um, this would look like Uh, like that. So now we have um, an X3D model loaded in our scene. 
camera set up, everything set up for us. Uh, we can now look at the code of the page and uh, we see that it's actually the code uh, that we just saw. So I will, um, so uh, what we're now going to do is to interact with it. So, I mean, describing the scene in here and loading models and describing the scene graph uh, is kind of nice, but um, you probably want to interact uh, with your with your scene in a, in, a, in a way. And the way we do that is actually uh, as we, or the way we would manipulate the scene is actually the way that we would manipulate um, the dome. So uh, uh, we have uh, on, the, uh, on the inline itself, we now have an, uh, we declared an on-click event and this calls the function red nose. This just changes the color of the, so we can get the uh, ID or we can, we can get um, the part of our mesh via the ID of the mesh. And then we can set uh, the parameter, for example, diffuse color here. So what should happen now, if I click the thing, the color of the nose changes. So, um, and we know what uh, we know. Uh, so we can, we can basically access, um, if, we, if we give the elements in our X3D file an ID, we can uh, get it with element ID and then we can access its parameters. And so we can set position, uh, color and everything else. Also make more complicated things, add stuff, remove stuff, add materials, remove materials, stuff like that. So um, I think this, this is really powerful if you combine it with uh, a templating engine, for example, like Vue, then you don't have to do this get element and uh, stuff uh, manually. You just have a representation in your JavaScript uh, and also you have access uh, in your dome for, for things like, um, like uh, arrays or conditional tags and stuff like that. So you can get really, really far with that. I, I think I actually, in my free time, some time ago, I implemented a little chess game with that. Not going to show that now, but yeah, you can uh, basically, I think a combination of this and, and Vue, for example, is, uh, is it's kind of a small uh, 3D uh, game engine where you can write uh, little, little uh, games with. So, um, yeah, let's continue. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we can load GLTF and X, uh, X3D files. We have uh, physically based rendering, so we can have actually really nice looking graphics. Um, I will now uh, say something about GLTF. So GLTF is just uh, a new or modern file format that is, uh, was developed uh, by our department and uh, with the help of uh, the consortium and uh, other people. So uh, it's basically uh, inspired by the SRC proposal that uh, also our department did. Uh, it's a, it's uh, the description of the scene itself is uh, not XML anymore, it's JSON. And, but we can include um, uh, other files um, into the graph and also uh, uh, yeah, binary data and not, uh, yeah, also binary data. Yeah, the PBR stuff is in it and it's also uh, used uh, by many, uh, companies right now like Microsoft, Facebook, and many, many more. It's really uh, evolving to a really good uh, web format. So um, we can load it uh, also where the inline text doesn't matter if we have X3D or GLTF file. Um, also the nodes then are integrated in, into the DOM so you can access the nodes by uh, their IDs. Uh, like we did before with the X3D file. Um, yeah, ma manipulated via the DOM API. And uh, uh, the, yeah, the support, uh, the X3D support is, was of officially released in uh, version 1.8. Um, that actually <laughs> should have been the uh, PBR demo. Sorry. So, um, Another thing I want to uh, just briefly look at is the Fraunhofer exter external model extension. So this extension 
allows us to link resources inside a GLTF file. So we don't have just a one dimensional structure to load those files. We can embed uh, links to other um, GLTF and X3D files inside the GLTF with this extension. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, just um, so I can not see the top of my uh, screen because of the controls of uh, Zoom, but so this is it. Can you please go full screen? Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, this is actually just, just an example. Uh, if we click here to the example, we see that um, these, these two, uh, this one is locally inserted into the DOM and these two are linked resources. So if we look into the code, we can see that uh, it just links one model, linked models, GLTF. So in this model, there is the scene with the linked models. We can just look into it by um, downloading. Ah, oh, where was the download button? I, it was in the example itself. Wait. So this download example is what I wanted. So when we download the example, um, we are now interested uh, in the, um, in this file, link models GLTF. So uh, this is a GLTF file. This is now not interesting for us, but what's interesting is this models text. So this is um, now loading, uh, embedding these, uh, or linking these other models into, uh, into our scene. Uh, we can do, an, uh, what also is nice, we can do explicitly say, okay, we want uh, GLTF or X, uh, X3D, but if we just leave, uh, leave uh, the ending, just leave it blank like this, uh, as you see, there's no such um, file here without an ending. But there is the X3D and the GLTF, and it, we are contact, uh, content uh, negotiation. It uh, decides which you want, um, which uh, which um, and uh, which type of file you want. If you provide both, you can set uh, um, the pri pri uh, prioritization <laughs> priority. So, um, okay. Uh, what I also briefly wanted to say that um, what I thought was kind of of a, of a funny thing is um, if if you don't uh, load external data like this model, uh, for example, or dynamically from uh, like with an HTTP request, you can basically build your whole application inside uh, inside an HTML file with only HTML and JavaScript, and you don't need to host it as we saw in the in uh, in this example. I just click it and. Um, yeah, it runs. Um, so uh, actually, uh, a, a guy uh, uh, made a tool that was just, he, he provided some X2D models. There's a way to load them without XHR, provided X2D models, and he programmed the tool just in one HTML file and shipped that to his uh, customers uh, as kind of a self contained executable HTML file. Um, that was kind of funny, I, I thought, but it also shows the power. You don't even need a um, need a software installed to to run to run your your tool. So, yeah, I think that was kind of nice. So um, back to the presentation. Um, yeah, that I, I think that. Right. So, okay. Uh, yeah, that was the demonstration. So um, usually here uh, there would be a roadmap, um, but uh, our department is uh, right now is 
mostly maintaining we have other big nice projects so uh, we are mostly maintaining um, the x freedom and it's really community driven so if you uh, uh, so most stuff that is new comes from the, from the community right now. So if you want to have a look and uh, maybe you want to uh, to uh, to get involved and uh, write something yourself, write a new feature you like, or just get involved and look at it, uh, please go to the um, to the Git to our Git page, GitHub page. And there's basically if or also if you have uh, have really in depth questions and stuff, if you need help with Xtreme, go there you will be helped. And um, yeah, the stable uh, build, uh, stable version right now is 8.1. The develop uh, version is uh, 8.2. Um, the GLTF examples you can access right here. And um, yeah, here's just uh, for, for the papers and uh, the uh, external model extension. Um, yeah, that, that's it from me. I hope that was uh, interesting for you and I could just give you a small introduction. I know um, I don't want to, to, to get in too much detail, but I think uh, just as an overview and where you can get further information, I hope this was uh, satisfi satisfying for you. So thank you again for listening and uh, I will give back to you now, Nicolas, I think. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, Max. Um, thank you so much. Um, that was a great presentation and I'm always uh, impressed when I see the, the kinds of um, features and capabilities um, that you guys are building into the, the tool. I, I would also um, uh, just sort of say thank you guys for open sourcing the tool. I know um, a lot of my projects and my students have benefited uh, from that. So a few of my undergrads have actually um, helped with some of the VR controller code in that. Yeah, I was uh, sorry. I was always also uh, impressed how many people are actually using it from the presentations that uh, I saw. I saw so far. It's basically everywhere. I, I really like it. And I also want to say that when I first uh, uh, was introduced to Xtreme uh, in the university. I was so impressed. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's crazy because I I was one of the people who sat there uh, with um, C++ and tried to get my, my first scene working when I was a child. And it was so much hassle. And I, I spent weeks to just draw the first quad. And um, yeah, <laughs> and this is so, so easy and so confident. I, I really love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. It, it lets authors, you know, uh, worry about some more uh, fundamental things uh, to the application success, yeah. the usability, the information, um, instead of uh, every triangle in the, in the yeah. scene. Um, uh, Max, I had a, a question in the Q&A, and um, I, yes. I'll pose it to you before we move uh, on, and, and other um, browser uh, authors can weigh in on this um, when it's their turn. Uh, the question is, uh, well, there's two here, actually. Uh, but one, is it possible to load custom models from a database, not from a file system? Thanks in advance. Um, yeah, it, it, as long as you get the, the, X, uh, the X3D um, code in a, in a format that, that, that you can embed into the, uh, to the X, uh, into the HTML, of course, you can just, I mean, if you just get it as a string, um, you can uh, just put it into the HTML. And um, if you want to add binary data, you of course can link into uh, inside of this uh, uh, this text. You can link to the binary data and uh, load it then. Uh, but probably you won't put your binary data into the database. I don't know. Right, right. Yeah, I think um, our um, sort of at least one of the more traditional solutions there is um, hey, you know that database. The same way that you on a URL make a query. Right with your question marks and your ampersands and your terms, you can do that. Make the query any URL from the web page or the X3D scene can call that query, and if the server returns a content type of X3D or a string, as Max mentioned, you can add that to the look, to the running scene graph. Um, so that's one possible way. Again, using um, sort of more of the web idea than the relate you know directly connecting to a relational database but um, that uh, that type of work is uh, is certainly possible I know in post GIS 
the uh, database, you can get your the results of your query as uh, well-formed X3D. So if you're pulling out shapes, uh, terrain, buildings, or whatever from the database, you can actually get it right out of the RDMS as an X3D fragment. It's kind of cool. Um, there's another uh, question, Max, for you. Um, are there ways uh, to use X3DOM offline on PCs or mobile devices when people don't have access to the internet resources? Yes, as I mentioned before, you can use it offline if you provide um, all the data you need. If you, of course, if you're offline, you cannot load something from the internet. But if you pro, uh, pro, put, it's it's pretty easy. You just put the the, the Xtreme uh, JavaScript file into the folder, load it from there instead of the uh, of the internet, and you're basically ready to go and put your Xtreme stuff uh, inside the HTML page. Um, if you want to load models, um, you get uh, and you don't host it, so that uh, what I, what I also showed, just click the HTML, don't host it anywhere. Uh, then you will get uh, course errors. That's the security um, of the browser. But uh, there are also uh, little tricks to circumvent it. So you can load local uh, local 2D files into your browser and then into uh, X Freedom. Yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. Um, so so that's a that's a really important idea about um, ways of publishing too. So. I might make a folder with hat, which has the X Freedom JS, the CSS, and then all my models and stuff. Everything is a relative URL within that folder. It's kind of a self-contained unit, right? And, you know, okay. Also, you can, uh, it's great to combine it also with other JavaScript libraries or phys physics library, for example. It's insane what you can do with just a so, few lines of code. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and make really, really. If you have also a, a good UI and stuff, you can make really. It, it they people open the HTML page and it looks like it's uh, it's a it's a desktop application. Yeah. Well, it's fabulous. It's fabulous. Well, thank thanks so much, Max, for uh, for your time and, and sharing the, the Don Hoffer work with us. It's it's really impressive, and uh, we look forward to working with you more. Okay, thank you. All right. Thanks so much.